Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to another edition. I'm Mike, and if you're brand new to this channel, please feel free to hit that subscribe button so I can see you again next time. But if you're coming back to the channel and you're not already subscribed, well, why not? Come join me on this adventure and please press that red subscribe button literally down below. It takes a second or two because today I've got such an awesome guest to join me on the movie Class of 1984. So firstly, let's take it away to my guest on this collaboration. Mike, what's the deal? Pickles is everything kosher. So to those that don't know, I'm Rashad from Rashad G Reviews. Here for another collab with my main man, Mike. And so yo, let's get into this, man. Class of 1984. That's right. Rashad G is back in the house once again. And we're talking about the class of 1984. But what I would like to do firstly is take it back over to Rashad. And also find out about any kind of prior knowledge Rashad had into seeing this movie. Or what this movie was kind of like around the time that he first experienced this movie. Class of 1984 actually dropped in 1982, and fun little trivia fact here, this was double featured with Mad Max The Road Warrior when it first came out, so when it was released here in the States, it was never really released as a, a, a single movie, it was always shown as a double feature. So uh, yeah, I knew about this movie for a while because the mom and pop video stores that I used to go to before was Blockbuster, I always seen the, the cover of it, but I never you know bothered to look at it because the cover of it... It looked like a punk rock band. It just didn't appeal to me back then. I was more into like the Goonies and the Karate Kid and stuff like that. So Class of 84 really didn't appeal to me. So it wasn't until about, I say, around 88 where I was watching network television and they advertised it. They said, you know, the um, the Tuesday night feature is Class of 1984 starring Michael J. Fox. I said, Michael J. Fox? I thought I'd seen all those movies. So I wanted to watch it, but I knew network television was the wrong place to watch a movie like this. So... I ignored that, went to the video store, rented it for the first time, watched it, and I had no business liking this movie as much as I liked it. What really intrigues me is the fact that Richard has this story to share, especially about like, the video rental stores back then, and actually going out to get the video rental of this instead of watching it on kind of like a brand new release at TV at the time. That itself is really cool and just really speaks volumes about such a classic time in just life and about video rental stores, whereas nowadays we're just spoiled for choice on streaming platforms. So that is honestly really cool. So anyway, if you haven't heard of Class of 1984, essentially it is a Michael J. Fox film in this Michael J. Fox filmography that I'm covering. It's directed by Mark Lester who actually went on to direct Commando starring Arnold Schwarzenegger which is just really awesome and then besides that he kind of really didn't do much else. These two especially two big films that he's known for maybe more so this movie because it's got more controversy than it does with Commando. Essentially the class of 1984 is around a teacher called Mr. Norris played by Perry King who goes to this high school where this high school is essentially known for a lot of bad things and a lot of of bad things are going down at this one particular school and essentially it is rung by this big kind of punk gang that's led by Timothy Van Patten who plays Stegman in the movie and essentially Mr Norris is trying to do whatever he can to help the kids of the school but one thing leads to another and then it all kind of goes all batshit crazy and the violence is non-stop throughout this movie. So just a quick heads up before we kind of go any further this is going to be a spoiler review so if you've not seen Class of 1984 I would highly recommend checking it out before you come and check the rest of mine and Richard's thoughts for this review because honestly guys just very quick summary of my thoughts absolutely phenomenal movie i'm so glad i actually got to see this last night and really i'm so glad i'm doing this michael j fox filmography because if i wasn't i maybe wouldn't have actually ever seen this movie because michael j fox isn't a prominent feature in this film at all it's definitely one of his earlier works and one of his earlier film roles before he kind of made it big on family ties and back to the future honestly this film is just so engrossing that it really really leads you into suspense and wondering what the hell is going to happen next so i've got a lot more to say about this but firstly let me take it over to Rashad and Rashad my man what positives have you got for the class of 1984? The positives I have with this movie every damn thing from the beginning of the movie with Alice Cooper take a look in my face I'm the future this is a grimy gritty dirty <laughs> no holes barred movie that does not pull any punches this is a movie that today would definitely get cancelled because of stuff that they were doing as far as, you know, teens doing drugs and just, just the different stuff that was going on in this movie. You know, um, there was a, a scene where the teacher 
the teacher's wife gets violated. You know what I'm saying? And not that uh, I advocate any other stuff, but I'm just saying back then a movie could tell the story that I wanted to tell without being canceled, without people saying, hey, you can't do this, you can't do that. No, this movie told a story. It told a story the way it wanted to tell it, damn it. And these kids did such horrible things that you couldn't wait to see them get theirs in the end. So that's why I say, you know, it's not bad that they, they, that they didn't pull punches because we got to see these bastards get what they deserved. But if anything, this movie did get controversy because uh, the way the kids got killed, you know, a lot of adults was like, hey, man, you know, this is this is teen brutality, man. You can't show this shit. But I'm like, did you see what these kids did? They hung a whole bunch of animals. You know, they they violated the teacher's wife while she was pregnant. These bastards got what they deserved. And they weren't actually kids in real life. They were like in their 20s, man. So chill out. Perry King is Mr. Norris. I thought I did a good job. Uh, the clear standout is Roddy McDowell is the biology teacher who loses his mind when the kids kill all his animals. I thought he was the standout. My favorite scene actually in the movie is when he held the class at gunpoint. <laughs> and he had your boy Stegman, the leader of the gang, had him at gunpoint, have him answer a question like, dude, if you don't get this right, I'm going to blow your fucking head off. I bet a lot of teachers now wish they could do that because teachers now can't even like, they can't even look at a kid sideways. Like a teacher, like growing up, a teacher could pop you in the ass and it was no problem. But now, if you look at a kid like this, oh, you're fired forever. Man, fuck that. Michael J. Fox is in this, but uh, it's funny because back then, I guess because Michael J. Fox was a big star, they advertised the movie as, hey, this is starring Michael J. Fox, but he's really a smaller supporting character. This is really Perry King and Roddy McDowell and also a shout out to uh, Stegman, uh, the actor that plays Stegman, uh, Timothy Van Patten, who also became a writer on The Sopranos and directed some episodes on The Sopranos. I thought he was excellent in the role of Stegman. Matter of fact, when I first saw the commercial back in the day, I thought he was William Zopka, you know, Johnny Lawrence from The Karate Kid. I thought it was William Zopka coming back to play a villain again, but no, this is Tim Van Patten. And this is like the only movie that I've seen him in, you know what I mean? So it's funny that he went on to write The Sopranos because I'm like, wait a minute. Tim Van Patten. Wasn't that Stegman from Class of 1984? The violence in this movie is crazy. When those kids get their asses handed to them at the end. Alright, one dude gets his arm buzzed off, okay? Uh, the, the chick, the one chick, you know, come and get it, teacher, teacher. She, she gets run over by a car. One kid gets burned to death. And the scene that, that really caused the controversy was when Stegman was hanging on by, uh, by the rope. And he asked the teacher to help him. And he swiped the knife at him, the teacher punched him and knocked him out and, you know, hung himself or whatever, you know, there was some controversy at the time about that, but like I said, because what these kids did was so horrific, they had it coming to them, another little fun fact, this was loosely based off some true events, so the person that wrote this movie, um, actually Tom Holland wrote this movie, um, uh, Child's Play and I believe The Howling, uh, this inspiration came because there were some, some crimes happening in the high school with these, with some kids, and the teachers and everybody complained about them, but the, the police was like, well, hey, unless you've seen them do it, unless you can prove they did it, we can't do anything. You know, our hands are tied. And that was this movie where they kept getting complaints like, hey, these kids are doing this. And it's like, well, did you see them do it? Can you prove that they did it? You have to basically walk in with, you know, holding their hand while they're committing the crime. You know, so that was one of the inspirations for writing this. Quite frankly, I can't disagree with Rashad. Honestly, this movie is a sore phenomenon. It blew any expectations that I had out of the water, really outstanding performances throughout, especially Perry King and Timmy V. Van Patten, Stegman and Mr. Norris. And I've also got to give props to the actor who plays Terry because truly, as the biology teacher, he was really, really cool. Now, I know Richard said that he was kind of one of the standouts, and I will agree with that, especially with the scenes that we get of him, but the true standout for me is definitely Perry King and Timmy V. Van Patten, those two, and the chemistry and this really tension that they build up throughout the movie, of course, with the help of Mark Lester at the helm, of course. Just the chemistry that these two build up throughout the movie is truly amazing. And one thing I can actually really admire about this movie is just a simplistic plot, this raw gritty, eatly, simplistic plot about this movie is what really helps carry it over. Now, it isn't for the faint and hearted, but what I will say about this is that I actually kind of miss films that's made as simplistic as this one because this is just honestly such a simple plot about kind of like a revenge tale, but told right, told to the point where you are actually invested from the first second that you play this movie. What I will also say about this is Michael J. Fox's character in this, Arthur, I really think that you could tell the snippets that we do get of him that he does have a promising career ahead of him and I'm so glad that he got to explore that promising career and it really did obviously pay off for him in the end. But for what he's given in this movie, I'm glad that he kind of wasn't a standout or main 
performance in this because I really didn't feel like he needed to. And I really felt like at the time where he actually produced this movie, where I believe Richard told me not long ago, he's actually 20 years old when he did this movie. I mean, firstly, he doesn't look it. He looks about 12. But ultimately, for what Michael J. Fox has given in this movie, he really does help to carry over the crucial part that really aligns this heated rivalry with Stegman and Mr. Norris. This is a phenomenal film and the positives for me is pretty much what Richard said. I completely agree, man. Truly. So with that in mind, Richard, have you actually got any negatives for this movie? Negatives? I don't have any negatives. I mean, I can see a criticism that, yeah, this movie is, is old looking. It's, but, you know, this is my kind of movie. I like a movie that, that that's dirty, you know, with the fingernails are dirty. You know, give me some grungy, dirty shit sometimes, you know. Nowadays, movies are too glossy. They're, they're too pretty. They're, they're too beautiful looking. Even a horror movie, like, say, like, Fear Street 1978 was supposed to be a, a callback to the 1970s or 80s Friday the 13th. It's too pretty. I don't. Sometimes I don't want pretty. A movie like this has to be dirty looking. So the, the look of the movie still matches. The action, everything is on point. If I can have one gripe, <laughs> if I can have one gripe is the, uh, the black gang that gets beat up by Stegman in his game. Now, you know, of course, as you know, I am black, I'm not Puerto Rican. So, uh, yeah, the fact that, you know, th this gang gets beat up so easily and they're like, yeah, you know, Leroy and, you know, only niggas that sell uh, stuff in here is us. Uh, that stuff I could have probably did without. Back, back in the 80s, brothers wasn't showing that much love. It, it is what it is. In the horror movies and shit, black people, they wasn't showing too much love. But we have come a long way. But if they, if they gripe, it would be that. So I can totally see where Rashad's coming from with the negatives. Yeah, I mean, there's very few far between in this. I guess it is an older looking movie. Of course, I mean, it was done in the 80s. But if you don't really like that kind of raw, gritty, grimy style, then this, yeah, this movie then definitely may not be for you. However, what I will say for me is I love the kind of dark, gritty tone movies, whatever decade it's from. Because those movies, you can really tell hold up firstly to start with in terms of just the appeal and want to rewatch that movie over and over again because I only seen this movie last night but I want to go back yet again and watch this again because it was just so fascinating the only kind of gripe that I would say is I guess some of the effects in terms of like when some of the characters are getting like punched or kicks is kind of like the typical kind of like 80s sound effects that you would maybe see in a lot of movies and you can tell that sometimes it doesn't quite connect but besides that I really don't have any negatives for this movie. So Rashad, my man, I'm gonna hand it back over to you. So what is your kind of final thoughts for the class of 1984? Um, This is like a classic B cult classic movie, you know what I'm saying? And I would love it, I recommend it to anybody, you know, but if, you, if you're offended easily, don't watch it because it's not for the faint of heart. And that's it and that's all. So Mike, thank you once again for having me on this video, bro. I appreciate it talking class of 1984. Michael J. Fox, I know you're doing a Michael J. Fox series even though he's not really in the movie that much, but he does have an impact. He, he's a standout character, and, and I really dig this movie. Class of 84 gets an A-plus for me. Love this movie. Even Roger Ebert at the time when this came out, Roger Ebert even showed us some love. So yeah, Mike, the floor is yours, bro. What do you have left for Class of 1984? Rashad dropping his thoughts once again, and with that in mind, guys, my score for the Class of 1984, which, by the way, on IMDb, I think has coming like a 6.5 out of 10. Nah, definitely doesn't deserve that low. Instead, it gets a score of... So, Rashad, my man, firstly, I've just got to say a big, big thank you for joining me on this latest escapade in the Michael J. Fox filmography and joining me on the class of 1984. Truly, guys, if you've not seen this movie, go out, stop what you're doing, and watch this movie. And to be honest, although this movie came out in 1982, it's probably one of the best films I've seen in 2021. And... That I really did not expect to see. So firstly, I've just got to give a big thank you to Rashad also for joining me on this collaboration. If you're interested in checking out Rashad's channel, which I wouldn't see why you wouldn't be, go check out his channel. The links to Rashad's channel is down below in the description box. Go give him some love. Tell him I sent you. And I'd really, really appreciate checking out his channel because he has such great content. Movie reviews, parodies. Honestly, just so much great stuff that Rashad covers. And he truly is one of the greatest YouTubers that I know personally on the platform. So go give him some love, go subscribe to him, and also give this video in the meantime a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you already haven't. And until the next time I see you, I'll be seeing you later.